And I think it's a great weekend uh, here on our campus, uh, not only with us getting two wins, but you know the win that our football program had yesterday is fantastic. And we're excited for them and really excited to watch them over the next couple of weeks. I think just the energy that you feel on our campus is uh, unlike any that I've felt since I've been here because of the success they're having and uh, maybe where we are here early in the year. In terms of tonight's game, uh, really a tale of two halves. Uh, first half, uh, we did an exceptional job uh, guarding Stephen Maxwell, Caleb, uh, and really a number of guys individually, but also as a team. And um, Stephen Hicks, you know, both those guys average between them around 18 points a game. And uh, we kept it on Hicks, you know, he ended up four points. But in the second half, Maxwell uh, dominated the action on their end. And, you know, if you look at it, uh, we gave him 23 points in the first half, and he scored 45 in the second, including 17 points in the last three and a half minutes. You know, we subbed at the end of the game, but we weren't responsible. Turnovers and defense. Uh, but for the most part, we'll take it, we'll learn from it, and grow. I think our focus is more towards uh, Wednesday. And in, in my opinion, we'll be playing one of the best teams that we played in the KO all season. Uh, Irvine has all of the makings of a uh, tournament team, a team that can win in the tournament. You have a seven foot five center, great coach, very organized on offense, uh, very organized on defense. And uh, we're going to jump up significantly in terms of the level of competition that we're going to face here on Wednesday. So that's, that's our focus right now, to be ready uh, and get ready for, for Wednesday's game. Um, the big reason that I really feel like about the way your offense went about getting those shots. You know, we shared the ball at times. Uh, I thought Rondé Jefferson was the best player on our team tonight. I mean, when he's in the game, so many good things are happening. He's playing with an incredible energy level. He does it on defense, he does it on offense. Some of the best passes of the night, he's either the recipient of, because he moves and runs the court, or he makes, he's an active offensive rebounder. But you know, he spearheaded a lot of good stuff for our team tonight. Uh, but sharing the ball the way they, they chose to play us, they left the three-point line open. And, you know, we're, we're a better three-point shooting team than maybe we showed the other night. Did you expect him to collapse a little bit on TJ when he penetrated the way that they did? Yeah, a little, little bit. You know, they played a similar style against San Diego State. Uh, against San Diego State, they showed more of a 2-3 zone. Tonight, they really sagged, tried to mix it up a little, a little bit more. Um, but we took what they, what they gave us. You know, looking at our offense, you know, once again, you know, we shoot 63% from the line. You know, you, you shoot 70% from the line you're looking at a really big offensive night. Uh, that, coupled with the 18 turnovers, uh, just too many. Very uncharacteristic for us to turn it over 18 times. We have to correct that. Coach, you said you were a little uh, concerned uh, about the way the team started the previous game in the exhibition. Can you comment about um, tonight's start versus the last couple of games? You know, we're just looking for players to make uh, basketball plays. And that five we put out there to get us off to a great start in terms of taking care of the ball, making free throws, coming out of the gates like, like you do in a place like McHale. Uh, we had a chance to, to have even more points in that first four minutes than we did. But uh, I didn't think they did a bad job. With Ronnie playing so well off the bench as he did last year, is it tempting just to keep going with that? We're going to talk that out. You know, that's, that's what all coaches try to learn early in the season, what combinations seem to do well with each other. Who does better maybe coming off the bench than starting? But we're, we're very much in search of uh, some of those answers. Uh, I don't mean that in a negative way as much as I think we just have to keep watching what's best for us. But whether Ron Day starts or not, the storyline for him is that he's playing really, really well. And it's great to see. There's that, there's that saying that you want to have an energy guy off the bench. I mean, do you believe in that philosophy? And obviously, he's that kind of player. He, he is, and you know, uh, people here at Arizona and you guys follow the history of our program. Jason Terry, what he did coming off uh, as the sixth man, and heck, he's done it in the NBA. Uh, I came from Xavier, and one of the great players to ever play at Xavier, James Posey, was kind of that type of player. Uh, when you think of Rondé, you think of James Posey, you think of that, like you said, the energy. But 
we have to we have to look at it. You know, every everybody likes to start. Sacrifice is a big deal in sports, and Rondé is a very unselfish kid. You know, I, I don't think not starting necessarily takes away from how well he's playing or how good of a player he is. Uh, but he could very well start next game too. I think we have to take a look at it. Keep watching our own team learning what works best. Sean, as you move forward in game by game in high school, how do you, how do you think the cohesion of the team, kind of like the, the chemistry or whatever, will evolve? Well, it, it has to keep evolving and growing. Uh, our leadership, I think, is the same. Keep evolving and growing. Uh, the hardest part, I think, about being a leader in basketball is that when you, when you don't play well yourself, which happens, you're still in charge. It's not as if you get a free pass. And every, everybody's a great leader when teams winning or you're playing really well. But what separates, I think, the great leaders or the leadership in the team is that they can almost see outside of themselves. In spite of how they're doing, they're still locked in and focused on the team. And we're, we're learning that. You know, I, I think that Brandon, Caleb, and TJ, that group is the unquestioned group of three that lead our team. Coach, can you talk about uh, Elliot's performance? Elliot's another uh, very positive person right now in terms of how he's playing. He's embraced his role. You know, you always try to define roles, and that can change as the season grows. But we really trust Elliot on defense. He plays with amazing effort. He can make shots, and when he's in, it's like Rondé, the ball seems to move easily. Two games that, that we've played so far, I thought Elliott was an A in the first game and an A in tonight's game. He did a really good job in both games for us. And he, I'm really pleased with him. I think his role can can solidify and maybe even grow. Coach, uh, did you expect to go as deep as you've gone minutes-wise with some of these guys? Or is it just a product of you know, the score being a Some of it's a product of the score. Uh, but. Don't get me wrong, it's not like we don't believe in our bench. It's just that some of our freshmen have a lot more to learn than the guys who've been here. But every day that they practice and every game that they play, they become a little bit more sure of themselves. It's great to get Deuce on in there a couple times. You know, he's really a skilled player, but you know, he's in the game and you know he, he on a handoff he just kind of flips the ball. Well, you can't do that, right? And he learned that he learned that tonight. So there's a lot of different things that those guys, Craig. Parker, Dusan will learn here early. That will really help us as the season grows. Parker has been, like like Elliot, really rock solid in the role that we have for him right now. And he did give us good minutes in our first game. He came right back and I thought gave us some great minutes in tonight's game as well. Coach, you commented on what a good team for mine is, and yet after that you go play a good game and now any worry about your team's focus for that game? No, I'm not worried about that. We've, we've done that well. I think that our players respect our opponents. And when we tell them the things that we're telling them about Irvine, I believe we have their undivided attention. And in some cases, we want to play better, you know, whether it be an individual or you know, 18 turnovers tonight, uh, that many fouls in the second half. You know, if you think about it, four, four free throw attempts in the first 20 minutes versus 24 in the second, 20 minutes. Same coach, same defense, you know, so we have to we have to address that, take a look at it. Same thing with taking care of the ball. You know. We have the type of team that can play 20, 25 minutes in a row without turning it over. Uh, we were sloppy at times. It made the game hard for you to watch, I'm sure, in the second half. <laughs> Still, on the post game feed, it seems like that's one of the areas where you guys are struggling to turn over. Range. Post feeding? Yeah, yeah. Is that an issue? Is that yep. good entry passes there? Or? I have to look at it. I'm, I'm very anxious to look at that because that's something we can do better, no, no doubt. You know, uh, whether it's and it's probably the relationship of both ceiling better, uh, maybe throwing it a little bit earlier, but uh, they did a good job of swimming around Caleb. And, uh, and to me, you get a couple turnovers, you get shy about throwing it in there, and it, it affected us tonight. So. That's something I think we can learn from in tonight's uh, ball game. How comfortable are you with Stanley shooting the 17 and 19? He had three big ones today. Stanley's a good good three-point shooter. He has to, and he'll learn, to just take the threes within rhythm, take them off of a, a great pass, 
and not not hunt three point shots, but take the ones that present themselves to him because he's such a physical player that when he's driving the ball and slashing towards the basket, you know that's what the other coach doesn't want to see. And then mixing in a wide open three, no question, that's good. But you know we're on him right now to rebound better. It, it just doesn't make sense for him not to be more of a factor on the glass. And we're hoping uh, when we get to Wednesday, we can get him more a part of uh, what we're doing there. Coach, uh, even in blowouts last season, you weren't really as liberal with these minutes. Uh, did you learn anything last year, maybe even when Brandon went down, to, to say maybe i got to get these guys early in the season a little bit? Not really. You know, every season's different, and every team has a different personality. Uh, I think we talked before our year started that from a number perspective, we probably have more depth. So it's up to us to try to develop that depth. That doesn't mean that you know we're going to play that many players every game. But our younger players are talented. It's just they have a lot to learn. And I think we have to make sure that when we put them in, it's at a good time for them and our team.